cows are one of the most popular builds in the game. And normally, a high population is a good indicator that a build is pretty powerful in the current meta. However, I think in the case of cattle, there are a lot of other factors which make their true power level a bit less obvious. Are cattle low tier builds that are simply propped up by human activity? Or are they a genuinely powerful high tier that would dominate with or without human help? Let's delve into their stats and abilities to find out. Cattle are part of a powerful faction of builds called bovines, which also includes the bison, cape buffalo, water buffalo, and historically, the auric. While there are a few differences between them, which we'll discuss in a tier list at the end of the video, they all share a few common traits. Bovines have an exceptionally high HP stat. It takes a lot of damage to bring them down, pretty much requiring team strats from multiple predator players at once. And unlike some other high HP builds, bovines don't just sit there eating the damage. No, they can strike back with incredible force. Their sharp, sturdy horns can inflict massive damage on anything unlucky enough to be caught in their path. And unlike antlers, which fall off and need to be regrown each year, the horns cattle have, they have year round, always ready to wreck someone's plan of attack. Their mobility stat is kinda mid, definitely not high enough to reliably escape a predator and their intelligence and stealth are both below average for a mammal. However, neither of these stats are all that integral to the bovine build's main strategy. While lower intelligence does create a potentially exploitable vulnerability to things like traps and lower their resistance to distractions and intimidation tactics, it's not so low that bovines aren't able to utilize team combos. Quite the contrary, in fact. The herd defense tactics employed by a competent herd of cattle makes them borderline impossible to defeat in a group. And since they have such a high HP stat, this gives Cow's teammates a lot of time to regroup and launch a counterattack if one of their herd members goes down and needs a save. Next, we should discuss their unique abilities and their signature combat moves. Bovines all have the Ruminant ability, which enables them to gain XP and level up all just from eating grass. This might seem like a boring ability, but its usefulness is actually hard to overstate. Having this perk essentially means that one of the most abundant plants in the game becomes your main source of XP, completely removing the need to search and forage for food. This means a player doesn't need to invest evolution points into things like climbing, digging, keen eyesight, or intelligence to be able to find food, and can reinvest those points into other stats, which is how cattle are able to support such a high base stat total. Cattle also push the mammal faction's signature move, lactation, to its limits. Cow milk is one of the most nutritious substances in the game, and allows new cattle players to level up extremely quickly. This helps keep their offspring safe, as it means they spend less time in the more vulnerable, low weight class, and quickly reach a size where hardly anything could realistically take them down alone. The cattle's signature move is Goring Rush, an extremely powerful head bash attack that deals heavy damage and inflicts incredible knockback, forcing the target back a good distance and also likely knocking the target prone which allows for easy follow-up attacks. Their sharp hooves deal extra damage to prone enemies, so this straightforward combo can be devastating if it catches an opponent off guard. That is about it when it comes to the cow's main combat moves. Cows can kick as well, but it's more of a stomp than anything. They don't have the flexibility or power to headshot someone like a horse can. They also cannot deal damage with their bite since they don't have upper teeth. Not a super big deal, but biting is a powerful option to have in a pinch, so it's at least worth mentioning. Now let's get into the cattle's weaknesses and counterplay. So due to the cattle's low intelligence stat, its resistance to mental status conditions like intimidation, distraction, or trickery is reduced. Intimidation is a pretty common tactic employed by a variety of different builds, from predators to omnivores to herbivores. Intimidation is one of the most effective tactics against cattle, and can often result in a cow losing a battle that it very easily could have won if it had not been scared away. And conversely, if a cow does decide to take the offensive, distractions can easily divert the attack, causing it to completely miss. While this is, of course, extremely risky, overcommitting to an attack and whiffing can oftentimes mean the difference between decisive victory and crushing defeat. Advanced players will even be able to utilize a combination of intimidation and distraction to kite cattle in specific directions, enabling them to control entire herds, which is what has allowed human mains to capture huge numbers of cattle. Cattle are known for their goring rush attack, which, while powerful, is imperfect. Many builds put a ton of points into the ability Concussive Force Resistance, enabling them to throw out headbutt attacks without much risk. 
cows have some blunt force resistance, but not enough that headbutts and charging attacks are without risk. In fact, at high speed, cattle can easily take lethal damage in a single hit if they strike another player at full force with their charging attack. Builds like the goat or bighorn sheep can easily best a cow in 1v1 combat, even though the cow's stats are much higher in a vacuum. Builds with forward-facing horns can also present quite a challenge to bovine builds, as bovine horns tend to face to the side and are more used for swiping and slashing at opponents than for stabbing forward. This means that in a direct confrontation, sharp antlers can deal a lot of damage to a bovine player while keeping them out of reach of connecting with their own horn attacks. There aren't enough different bovines for a proper full-length tier list video, but I think I can do a quick rapid-fire ranking to close out this video. The basic cattle comes in at a solid B tier. Definitely not a bad build, but one with a lot of weaknesses that high tier builds can exploit. Their main advantage over the other, more wild cattle variants is that due to selective breeding by humans, the domestic cattle are actually the best in the game at milk production, and therefore their offspring level up and reach larger sizes much quicker. Definitely a much more beginner friendly build, although at the end of your playthrough there's a good chance a human will eliminate you. Also in B tier we have the Yak a mountainous variant of the cattle that opted for slightly lower base stats in exchange for better resistance to the cold and better mobility on icy or rocky terrain. Same basic weaknesses as the common cattle, but its ability to survive the cold Himalayan mountains means that it has less natural enemies to contend with than cattle in less hostile climates do. At the bottom of A tier we have the bison. The bison are the largest bovine builds and traded some of their power stats for extra health and defense. As a result, they have shorter horns and lots of padded fur on their head, meaning that they can tank a lot more damage, but also can't deal as much damage using Goring Rush. This can be a bit of a problem, as being able to one-hit a wolf would really help discourage aggressive teams of wolves from attacking them. Since they can't get a one-hit kill without a crit, some wolves get pretty brazen in their attacks on Bison. Still, they're tied with the Moose as the premier tank of the North America server, and have favorable matchups against the Grizzly Bear so still definitely a solid high tier. Next in A tier we have the Water Buffalo, a bovine build with roughly equivalent stats to the common cattle, but with higher offensive stats and massive horns. They get a mobility bonus in shallow water, which, while not that busted of an ability, is still pretty nice to have. Water Buffalo have to be able to fight off one of the most powerful solitary predator builds in the game, the Bengal Tiger. Anything that can take on this thing has to be at least A tier. The human player base in the India server is also notably less aggressive towards bovine players, which makes them a lot more viable in that meta. But when it comes to hostile metagames, nothing compares to Africa. And despite the abundance of extremely powerful predators like the lion and hyena, and territorial giants like the rhino and elephant, the Cape Buffalo is still notorious for being one of the most dangerous builds in the game. It's one of Africa's big five, a status given to builds which are notoriously difficult for humans to defeat 1v1. And so I think for this reason, the African Cape Buffalo ranks first among the bovine builds, but it still doesn't quite crack S tier, mostly because it's overshadowed by the Wildebeest in the African Savannah meta. The Wildebeest, which is not a type of cattle or buffalo, but rather is essentially an antelope with higher stats, may not be as bulky as the Cape Buffalo, but it does have a much higher base speed stat, and this speed is pretty crucial for being able to escape an ambush from Africa's predator builds, and for punishing opponents who don't respect the Wildebeest's range, leading to the Wildebeest being vastly more successful than the Cape Buffalo. This level of supreme optimization is what it takes to crack S tier in the African server. Now, this doesn't mean cattle will never be S tier. In fact, I think there's a pretty strong argument to be made that prior to humans unlocking the gunpowder technology on the tech tree, bison were the undisputed S tier of North America. And although they were all but annihilated from the server, their numbers are slowly but surely returning to healthy levels. It's quite an inspiring story, which you can check out right now on CuriosityStream, the sponsor of today's video. CuriosityStream is a subscription streaming service where you can watch thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles, including the Buffalo documentary, as well as many of my other personal favorite titles, such as Out of the Cradle and Leaps in Evolution. You can get access for just over a dollar a month by going to curiositystream.com slash and choosing the annual plan. You'll also get access to Nebula when you do, so you can watch my videos, Johnny Harris's videos, Real Life Lore's videos, and a bunch of other awesome creators' videos early. Do check it out when you get done here. There's a lot of great content to watch, and I wouldn't want you to miss out. 
So again, go to curiositystream.com slash Tirzu to see Return of the Buffalo, plus a giant library of other fun content to watch. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.